Hello, welcome to this week's Cleave Tech Tech Tip. Now I'm interrupting this series on my slot stocks car that I was rebuilding um, to bring you this special tech tip this week. If you haven't seen the series on the slot stocks car, then I'll put a link up on the screen here. So take a watch of that and then you can catch up by next week. But today's episode really was, I was thinking about preparation for this upcoming 24th Nationals in the UK and thinking about so what sort of gearing do I want to run the cars? Now I know what sort of gearing I normally run and I was checking through my box and seeing what do I normally have, what have I got in stock, what gears might I need to prepare and glue up and then I was thinking well this would make a good tech tip feature. So keep watching and we're going to go through about gear selection and what I might be running at the 24th Nationals. So the eagle-eyed of you might have noticed that there's not just 24th car chassis here, there's 32nd chassis here and a couple of 24th chassis. But when I was thinking about gearing and I was thinking about the tech tip that I was going to bring to you this week, I sort of thought, well, all these cars here that you see in front of you, we all use CCAM motors. One of them has a slightly different type of armature, but all the other classes use CCAM motors. Yet we use sort of different gearing across all the classes. And Why do we use different gearing? Why is different gearing necessary? Well, that's what I'm going to go through today. So let's take a look at this class. Well, this class is our what we call our 30 second super production class. It uses these JK X32 chassis and we use a CCAM motor. They're perhaps not really designed for CCAM motors, these chassis, but we managed to squeeze one in nonetheless. And um, we squeeze in a CCAM motor, but this has got a super wasp arm. I'll put the wind of a Super Wasp arm up on the screen now so you can see what it is. It's not massively different to a Group 12. But these chassis here, they handle pretty well. When they're set up well, they do handle very well. But one of the key things is we use this type of body. So we use like a sports car shell that's got quite a lot of downforce. It's got a big wing. Um, you know, it's got quite a lot of downforce on the front and back of the car to hold it onto the track. Now, these things tend to lap our Nationals track at the same pace as a 30 second saloon car, which I'll go on to in a minute, which has a faster motor in, but a slightly lower downforce body. Now the gearing on these kind of cars can vary quite a bit actually, depending on the type of motor. I'm actually running this on six to 38. So this is 638 gear ratio. Now some people, run something like a 742, but anywhere maybe 740, 741, 742. Some people even run 640 on these. But again, it also depends on the type of track. Now, this got me thinking about the other classes as well and why we run different ratios. Now, in my case, this motor here in this car is designed to have very high revs, but very low torque because these cars used to be quite a handful. But on our big Nationals track, and if you haven't seen a picture of it, I'll put it on the screen now. So on our big Nationals track, it's very flowing. It's very, very fast. It's got a good high top speed, and there's only a couple of really slow bits on it on a couple of lanes where you actually have to slow down and need some torque. So you need a lot of top end. But you also need a little bit of punt on the track. So 638 on here, but I'm actually thinking maybe next time round I'll go for a big opinion because I got beaten last time. I had excellent handling and uh, and good you know good corner exit speed etc. But I was losing out the top end of the straights, so I might try a different ratio on my car next time for this class. But perhaps the most common ratio for this class on our large nationals track is probably with a seven tooth pin in a maybe seven forty one something like that, maybe seven forty something like that on these cars. And that sort of makes sense with a fairly high downforce body. You can have a big opinion and have more top speed around the track because you don't need to slow down so much. But then let's say we change classes and now we come to this class which is a 30 second saloon class. And this time we're running bodies like this. This is a better Audi, I think DTM Audi. You can see it's got nowhere near the downforce 
of the other bodies for the production car class, but the chassis are more complex. So the chassis are potentially better handling chassis, and we're running a Group 12 armature in our CCAM. So in effect, these motors should be faster than the Super Wasp armatured CCAM that was in the other class. So we've got a faster motor, but lower downforce body. So in this class, we tend to run six tooth pinions and maybe 40 tooth spares. So whereas perhaps the most popular gearing in the other class was seven to 40 with a slightly slower armature, but a high downforce body, this time we're revving the motor more six to 40 because they are clearly these shells don't have so much downforce. Therefore, perhaps your top end is not restricted so much by the drag of the car. And also you perhaps need more gyroscopic effect on the motor to get the handling rather than using the downforce on the body. So hence the gear selection for that class. And then we come on to our two 124 scale classes that we run with CCAM motors. We have our 24th production and these use a fairly, they're fairly good actually, there's quite a lot of downforce on these, but nothing like a sports car. But this is an Atan Mercedes DTM. So they're sort of saloon car type body shells again. So the downforce on these isn't massive, but it's still pretty good. And then we have our 124th Open Group 12, where we run quite a high downforce body. The end plates are a little bit shorter than on perhaps a Eurosport car, but the downforce on these is still very high. And there's a lot of sort of downforce and grip onto the track. And again, the chassis are perhaps better designed, so they have more handling, better grip from the chassis than these production cars, but these are pretty good cars anyway. So like I said in the 32nd classes, actually a similar principle applies. The class here with the lower downforce body shells, we tend to run a slightly larger spur gear. Now these are 24th cars, so the high speed or the top speed of them around the track is generally higher anyway, because they handle better. So you're not slowing down, speeding up, slowing down, speeding up anywhere near as much because their cornering speed is greater than a 32nd car. And both of these classes pretty much use the same motor specs. You can use the same motor in your production car and your open group 12 car. You might notice this one has an aluminium end bell. That's pretty much the only difference in the rules or the only difference that some people do between the two motors for the classes. But a production car can use exactly the same motor as your open 12 car in most cases. So we're talking same motors here. But the production car with the saloon type shell with a lower downforce, we might run something like 741, maybe 742, maybe even 743, because we need the revs of the motor to give us our handling of the car rather than relying on the downforce. So we don't quite need that ultimate top end, we actually need slightly more handling around the corners to get a better lap time. But when we move to the open group 12 class with the high downforce body, the good handling chassis, lots of grip, we can actually have a higher top speed and our average speed around the lap is much higher. Therefore, in something like this class, we could go down to a 40 tooth, maybe I've even seen people go down to 38 tooth spurs, seven to 38 for a very high top end speed. But again, it does depend on your motor. Can your motor cope with that? Have you still got enough torque to pull all that downforce? So again, it's a bit of a compromise. And our track in the UK, as I've said before, is a very high speed track. You need a lot of top end, you need a fast motor. Whereas when I went to the European Championships, in Latvia this year in preparation for the Israel World Championships. I'll put a picture of the track that we raced on on the screen. You can have a look. When I raced on that track, it's a total different kettle of fish. It's not such a high speed track as our UK track. You need much more mid-range speed on it. It's not a slow track by any means. The corners are generally very fast but you haven't got that difference between having really slow speed and really high speed corners. They're all sort of mid speed corners. So again, the gearing of your car needs to be slightly different to that. So there's lots of things to think about with the gearing and I've just touched on one thing today so far. So where does that leave me for this weekend's preparation for the 24th National Championships in the UK? 
well this is a practice gear anyway but you can see this one's a 41 tooth 72 pitch Cohosa gear on a 332 axle again this axle's been prepared for perhaps a glued on gear in the past it's got a couple of grooves on it uh, this gear has been used before in practice it's a screw on gear um, I'm, I'll probably have a glued on gear somewhere in my box of gears but where does that leave me well basically it means that I've got to prepare a range of gears and I'm going to have a range of 38, 39, 40, 41 and some angled 43 tooth gears all ready for this weekend's racing so that depending on the motor that I'm actually going to be using depending on the torque characteristics of the motor depending on the rpm of the motor I can select the right gearing for the right motor and the right car in the right class to try and get the best I possibly can out of performance of my car. So here we have it, a range of gears here. There's actually some gears in here for other classes of car as well for the Eurosport class that I might be using. But you can see I've got some gears sitting here. They, they aren't prepared yet, they're just spare brand new gears. But I have some angled 43 gears. Let's have a look closely at them. Here we are, they are very, very nicely made gears, you can see, but they've got a roughly, I think it's a 16 degree angle on them. Um, very good for use in production cars, um, really nice. They somehow have managed to make them a little bit smaller in diameter than the equivalent Cohosa gears, but these are 72 pitch, 43 tooth gears. They're pretty light as well. They're pre-lightened, as you can see, in the moulding of the plastic around the outside. The boss is all cut down on the sides as well. So they're actually pretty light gears. You don't have to do a lot of work to these to be able to use them. And I was quite impressed with the durability of them as well. So I do like these gears very much. So let's take a look at some of the gears I've got on this little holder here in my box. So this one's marked up. This has got red on it. The colours indicate perhaps the time I glued them up. So this one's a 40 tooth. Uh, this one's been used before. You can see it's had a little bit of use, but it's not too bad. It's probably okay for a practice gear. Um, maybe not going to use it for a full race. It's had a bit too much running for that one. But that's a 40. This one here, 38. What else have I got here? I have another 40. And I think I have another 40 as well. Yep, so some 40s. The odd 38. And a... 40 there as well. What else do I have in here? What's this pot got? This one here. These have virtually brand new gears. I don't think any of these have run. Uh, just double check. No, I don't think any of those have run. But we've got a 39. We've got a 39. Another 39. A 40. And we've got a 38. Okay, so I've got a range of gears there to choose from. Again, these are pretty light, these Cohosa ones. These were all pre-drilled um, Cohosa gears and I've glued them onto an axle, turned the boss down. So they are pretty light, pretty good, ready to go. What have we got on this rack? Let's have a look. So we've got some of the traditional style Cohosa gears with a metal boss, but they're still drilled out. So we've got another 40. We've got, what's that one? Another 40. And that one there, we've got another 40. So we've got 40s on that one. Again, they look pretty new. This one may just have had a tiny little bit of running. You can see just on the teeth there, that little shine as I rotate it. So that's had a tiny bit of running. But we've got a fair few 40s there, which is a common ratio really to use. It's sort of the mid-range stuff. Um, ah, you can see something different on these. We've got this one here. So that's a 41 drilled and ready but then we've got these gears these are 80 pitch gears which are possible to use on a Eurosport car I wouldn't use them on a group 12 um, group 12s can be a bit torquey a bit violent for 80 pitch gears they're not so good in crashes and accidents um, especially the angle of the motor that you have to put on an 80 pitch gear I mean they will work but they're just slightly more fragile um, a nice smooth gear mesh on an 80 pitch gear but then more for Eurosport cars where we might run something like 645 gear ratio on 80 pitch gears. But I got a few of those ready as well. And I think all of these might actually be 80 pitch gears. Oh no, there's a couple of different ones in there. Oh no, they're 44s. They're all 80 pitch gears on that one. And the last one, 
what do we got there? I think again, these are all 80 pitch gears of various descriptions all glued up, ready to go. So I do have 38s, 39s, 40s, 41s and 43s. I've got no 42s, but we'll go with what I've got. So I've got a good range to select from. Okay, they are slightly different sizes. So if I'm changing gear ratio, I may very well need to move the motor slightly in the car to get a better ratio. But that's quite a quick job to do, to quickly move your motor to change the ratio slightly, and away we go again. In 24th, I'm pretty much using seven tooth pinions on all of my uh, Open Group 12 cars and my production cars. I probably won't change the pinion size at all. So to sum up our tech tip, if your chassis is okay at handling, but perhaps not so great, or you might be using a body that doesn't have a lot of downforce on it, then you may consider revving the motor some more to get some handling in your car. You'll lose a bit of top end, but you will get more handling on the car. And if you're racing on perhaps anything other than a really high banked track, like a King track, if you're running on a flat track style uh, track where there's actually some corners you have to brake for, then revving the motor more tends to give you a little bit more handling. So consider using a small pinion or a bigger spur to get that handling back. But again, on the other hand, if you're running perhaps an open chassis where you can get some good handling, some good grip from your chassis and you can tune it as you like, and you're possibly even running a body with high downforce, excellent grip, excellent handling, then you might wanna consider going to a slightly larger pinion or a smaller spur to increase the overall top speed of your car because you're not having to slow down for the corners as much as using a car with a not so good handling chassis and low downforce body. So there's some things to consider with gear ratios that you might try on your local track. Maybe you try it on your raceway and see how you get on. You can tell me in the comments below the video how you get on, that'd be wonderful if you've tried different gear ratios, if you've found similar things to me, if you perhaps even have a different concept on selecting a gear ratio to me. Now, there's so much more about gear ratios that I could go into, and I will do in a future tech tip. But for now, I'm gonna leave it there. So thank you very much for watching this tech tip. I hope that gives you a starting point about thinking about gearing again. So sort of rather than just perhaps copying what I'm doing, all the tracks are different, all, tra all motors are slightly different. Have a go, experiment with gear ratio, see how you find it, see how it changes the handling of the car. But remember, perhaps try it with the same motor. So don't keep swapping motors out all with different gears on. Maybe try one motor, try swapping pinions, try swapping spur gears, and seeing what effect that has on the lap time of your car. Obviously, you've got to be confident at driving a track, you've got to be consistent at driving a track, because if you're falling off everywhere, then it's not really giving you a good indication of any changes you've made to your car and how that affects it. You've got to learn your track first. So thanks again for watching. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe, hit the big C, watch my other videos, and I'll be back again next week, probably continuing with my slot stocks videos. Bye for now.